Well, calculus was developed as a result of solving two problems. One was finding slope of a tangent line at any point on any curve. And the second was to determine area under the curve. So those two problems were being solved and in that calculus was developed. So finding slope of a secant and thereby finding slope of tangent line at any point on a curve is a very important application of calculus. In fact, that led to calculus. Now, with the help of this example, we will try to see how. Now, the question before us is, determine expression in simplified form for the slope of secant PQ, where P is the point 9, 3, and Q is 9 plus H, it should be 9 plus H, F of 9 plus H, right? Let me correct this. This is 9 plus, not 1, but H. Where F of X is equal to square root of X. Now, to understand what points we're talking about, let me sketch this function and then we'll explore it further. So here is a small sketch for this function. That is f of x equals to square root of x. As you know, square root of x is kind of like this. Correct? So here we are given two points. One point is p, which is at x equals to 9. So 9 square root is 3. So y will be f of 9, right? Do you understand? That is how you get 3. f of 9, 9 square root is 3. So let's say this point is 9 for us. And that point is... So let's say this is 9 for us along the x-axis, correct? And along y-axis, we get the value that is f of 9, correct? So f of 9 is equal to 3. Now, let's consider another point, q. So this is a point p for us. Now let's consider another point Q. Let's say that is the point Q for us. And point Q is at x value of 9 plus h. Correct? 9 plus h. So what is the y value? So the y value will be f of 9 plus h. Correct? So that becomes a y value. Right? That is the y value. Now the question here is, Determine expression in simplified form for the slope of secant PQ where P is 9, 3 and Q is 9 plus H and Y value will be F of 9 plus H. Correct? That's the Q point. And we need to find slope of the secant. That means the line joining them. Right? So let's say this is my line joining P and Q. Correct? So slope of the secant is what is of our main interest, correct? Now, we know what is slope of a line. Slope of a line, as we know, is rise over run, correct? So we can write slope of PQ as rise over run. So rise will mean change in y value. So let me write delta y over delta x. So that is slope of a secant, right? Now what is rise and what is run in this particular case? Let's draw a triangle and then figure it out, okay? So our triangle will be, this is change in x, right? And that is change in y from p to q, correct? So change in y for us is how much? Change in y is difference in these two y values. So the Values for us are f of 9 plus h minus f of 9, which is 3 in this case. So we'll write 3, right, given to us, divided by change in x. Now change in x is 9 plus h minus 9, correct? So that is change in x. So slope of PQ in our case is this. 
Now the question here is how to find this slope. Now f of 9 plus h is what? The function given to us is square root of x. So we can write this as, let me start from here now. f of 9 plus h means in our function we'll replace x with 9 plus h. So we get in the numerator square root of 9 plus h minus 3 divided by 9 plus h minus 9 is h, correct? So that is what we get in denominator, correct? So now, how to simplify this? To simplify this, what should we do? We should rationalize, correct? So we can rationalize this by multiplying and dividing, or let me write a new step here, right? So let's rationalize it here. So square root of 9 plus h minus 3 over h can be simplified by rationalizing numerator. So we get, we'll multiply and divide by its conjugate, which is 9 plus h plus 3 divided by square root of 9 plus h plus 3, correct? Now, here it is like, a minus b times a plus b, so we get a square minus b square. So our numerator now becomes square of this is 9 plus h minus 3 square, which is 9, divided by h times, within brackets, this factor, which is 9 plus h plus 3. Correct? Okay? Now here, 9 plus h minus 9 is h. So we get h in the numerator and we already have one h in denominator times square root of 9 plus h plus 3. Correct? Bracket close. Now as you can see, h divided by h is 1. So we just get 1 here. Correct? So now, let me take it to the right side. So what do we get? So from here, as you can see, we get slope, let me now write slope as m for the secant is equal to 1 over square root of 9 plus h plus 3. And that is the answer for this particular question. So this is a simplified form of the slope of the secant PQ where P is 9, 3 and Q is 9 plus H and Y value is F of 9 plus H. So that becomes the secant for this segment PQ, right, on the function F of X equals to square root of X. Now let's do the second part of the question. That is not asked here, but let's develop a concept of tangent from here. Now what you observe is, if I bring Q closer to P, let us say if I bring Q to this point, so then the secant will be kind of like this. Do you see that? Now Q is here. Let me call it Q dash. If I bring Q further closer to P, it will be kind of like this. Do you see that? Let me say Q double dash. As Q comes closer and closer to P, what do you notice? You notice that the H value decreases. Do you see that? So what we notice is that as Q comes closer to P, then the difference between their X values decreases. Then what happens? Then H becomes closer to zero. Do you see that? Since we push Q closer and closer to P, then 9 plus H, that H value, which is so long here, becomes lesser and lesser. Ultimately, it is almost zero. At that point, we get our tangent. Do you see that? At that point, we get our tangent. So the definition of tangent comes from here, and we introduce the term limit. So how close h comes to 0? Very, very close, but not exactly 0. Do you understand? So we say, now here, when limit 
of h approaches 0 at that point this m which is slope of secant right becomes slope of tangent do you understand then this m which is slope of secant let me write slope of secant it approaches slope of tangent at P do you see at the point P so with this method we can actually find slope of tangent at any point on a curve like f of x which is square root of x which is not a circle or something it's like a curve right so this concept can be extended to any function for that matter now let's complete our solution uh, rather let's develop the concept of tangent now we say well let h be very very close to zero that means limit h approaches zero in that case the slope of secant approaches that of tangent and now see let see what happens to our expression we'll write this expression same as 1 over square root of 9 plus h plus 3 correct and we have added this term limit h is approaching 0 that means h is very very small if you write h as 0 0.01 you get your answer to two decimal place accuracy if you write h as 0 0.001 Zero, zero, 001 let's say if h is equals to 0 0.001 and we calculate this value of slope then you get accuracy of third decimal place so if this h is very very small then you can accurately get the value of slope of tangent so let's assume that h is almost zero in that case slope m of tangent will become let's put 0 here will become 1 over square root of 9 plus 3 which is 1 over square root of 9 is 3 3 plus 3 which is 1 over 6 so that is the right answer for slope of tangent at point P do you see that so that is how we can get slope at any point on any function so the concept here is we introduce a point Q which is very close to P we say it is H distance apart and if this H approaches 0 then slope of secant approaches slope of tangent that is the concept so this is the answer for this particular question which is slope of secant in simplified form and we extended this to get slope of tangent at p which is 9 which is 9 comma 3 and that is 1 over 6 and that is equals to 1 over 6 do you see a value 1 over 6 and that's how we can find slope of tangent now when we compare these two things then as we study we will find that this is called instantaneous rate of change so we'll also give it a name and that is instantaneous rate of change and this is secant will be termed as average rate of change so let me write short form average rate of change so from now onwards the problems whenever in a problem you are asked to find average rate of change you're trying to find slope of the secant pq kind of right and whenever the statement is to find instantaneous rate of change then we are trying to find slope of the tangent we are trying to find a slope with limit where h approaches zero then we get instantaneous value of rate of change if there are two distinct points then we get average rate of change okay so this is a huge concept which we are going to explore now in this playlist thanks and all the best i hope you appreciate it